As a knitter, I've been a beginner for about 30 years, <laughs> but there's still no better way to take it slow. And if you're thinking knitting could possibly make for gripping TV, Seth Stone wants to tell you there's an entire country that pointedly disagrees. <laughs> It's television's version of taking a deep breath. A very long, very slow deep breath. So, I'm... It's called slow TV, and it's a surprising smash hit in Norway. It began with this broadcast of a train journey from the coastal city of Bergen to the capital, Oslo. The formula was simple. Put a few cameras on a train and watch the scenery go by for seven hours. Did you know where that journey would lead, how successful it would be? No, not at all. <laughs> Runa Muklebust and Thomas Hellum are the brains behind the whole thing. We met at the Bergen train station. It's normally one of those ideas you get late night after a couple of beers uh, in the bar and when you wake up the other day, um, uh, it's not a good idea after all. But much to their surprise, there was a green light from their bosses at Norway's public broadcaster NRK2. Actually, we we like it being a bit strange, a bit uh, crazy, because then it's um, then it's more fun. And if the viewers laugh or think that oh, wow, this is too crazy, that's basically the kind of reaction you you really want from the viewers. About a quarter of all Norwegians tuned in to watch some part of that train trip. They ran historical clips when the train went through a tunnel, but other than some music, there was no narration, no plot, and thanks to public broadcasting, no commercials. Yes, of course it's boring. You admit your own show is boring? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's uh, much, of, much of life itself, it's, it's boring. But in between there, there are some excitement moments, and you just have to wait for them. Yeah, yeah. Since the train in 2009, they've experimented with other slow ideas. Oi, ja, det var litt, uh, and folks at all levels have taken notice. I understand that in Norway, for example, one of the big hits on TV is na <laughs> National Firewood Night. <laughs> this is true. Video of logs burning for hours. 12 hours in all. Then there was a national knitting night, which started, of course, with shearing the sheep. Knitting the sweater came much later in the 13-hour broadcast. The shows get slower and slower. And it has to be uh, unique, uh, not a copy of the last one. So we, just, we, have, to, we have to push the boundaries uh, for each show, I think. The show titled Salmon Swimming Upstream ran 18 hours. And afterward, the head of the station said it felt too short. Is there a recipe for the perfect slow TV? It's important that it's an unbroken timeline that you don't take away anything, that's everything it's in there. It's all the boring stuff is in there, all the exciting <laughs> things it's in there. So, so you as a viewer has to find out what's boring and what's interesting. It kind of requires you to, uh, to precisely to slow down, to kind of twist your head in a little bit of a different direction. Are you a fan of slow TV? I am. Uh, Espen Ertribarig is a professor of media studies at the University of Oslo. When you first heard about slow TV, did you think you'd like it? No, I, I thought the whole notion was weird, to tell you the truth. But it, it turned out that uh, at least some of it I found surprisingly uh, appealing. Ertre Barig likens slow TV to opening a sort of window, an escape valve from what he calls fast-paced eye candy TV. When did we come to accept 
that television should be this accelerated, busy, intense, in-your-face thing. At some point, that became the norm. The producers say one scene sums up their approach. Uh, once we um, passed a cow on, on one of our journeys, and we put a camera on it, and the camera just kept rolling, and we didn't cut away, and then you keep it, and then you keep it, and then you keep it, and then suddenly uh, a story evolves. It's because what is the cow doing, and why is it walking there, and uh, where is it heading, and why is the cow alone? So suddenly there comes a story out of it. You have to see what happens. There was plenty of time to follow that cow because they came across it while shooting an episode which followed a cruise along Norway's coast. That cruise, well, it was five and a half days long. Slow TV broadcast all 134 hours of it live. At one point, almost half of Norway was watching. Norwegians lined the ship's route, often waving flags or welcoming it into port. There were unexpected cameos. A water skier in a mankini, for instance. Even the Queen of Norway made a surprise appearance. And the trip revealed some unexpected talent. You became something of a star. Well, <laughs> it wasn't meant like that. Anna Bildstein Hogberg, the ship's purser, remembered how one night seemed a little quiet. I just felt that we need to rock and roll a little bit. So, so you me, picked up the mic? Yeah. Slow TV has been syndicated around the world, and since then, she gets recognized. People from Australia come and just, it's you! Slow TV episodes are special events. They're not on all the time. <laughs> The creators want them to stand apart from regular programming. All of this got us to thinking. I wanted to show you something and get your thoughts on this. We have something on Sunday morning called the moment of nature. It's at the end of every broadcast and I thought you guys might like to see it. We leave you this Sunday morning among the bighorn sheep of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And how many seconds do you dare to keep it? <laughs> Watch. Uh, yes. Definitely. I, I get the feeling, yes. Slow TV yeah. in yeah. the making? Compared to other things, yes, it's definitely. And I guess you get a lot of good reactions on this one. The audience loves yeah. I guess the it's moment popular. of nature. Yeah, yeah. And they always want it to be longer. Yeah. Exactly. So make it longer. Make it that means <laughs> this piece has to be shorter, <laughs> yeah. so watch it. Stop this, stop this piece now. <laughs>